So it's honestly quite surprising to me to say that I'm ashamed I like Smash Brothers as much as I do. Despite the terrible online, pointless balance patching and shamefully lazy kits some characters have put together, I still really like the Smash Bros experience as a whole. And coincidentally, my thoughts almost transfer one to one when it comes to TF2. At the end of the day, the core fundamentals of these games makes them insanely fun to play and addictive as well. So what if we take two things I like and combine them into one? Don't look at me, I'm rocking! Now I know this isn't always a good idea. Like for example, I like cars and I like chips, but I don't run over my chips every time I eat them because that just kind of ruins the experience and is a bit pointless. But I do enjoy these two games and I do think TF2 characters could translate quite well into Smash depending on who you pick. So in this series, yes series, I'm going to be designing movesets for all the TF2 mercs in Smash using pre-existing Smash moves as a basis. And we're going to kick this series off by designing moveset for, um, this one. I do have a bit to explain first as to how this will work, but timestamps for everything can be found in the description below and the categories of the video. Let's get started. Now I know there are several people out there who have designed movesets for the Mercs in Smash before, but there aren't very many who have designed their movesets based off pre-existing moves. You could say, for example, if Scout were to be added into Smash, one of his moves would be throwing the Mad Milk. But how would this play out in practice? How heavy would this projectile be? Would it be able to push through others? Would this see a lot of use if he only had one projectile? How would its use be affected if he had multiple? What if this move were to be placed onto his neutral special? Does that mean it will be B reversible? Would this move only be good if it were placed onto a character with good physics? How would it fare on a character with bad physics? What are Scout's physics? These are the kind of questions I often have when watching these kind of videos and not all of them are answered in the same place. So no, this video is not a case of somebody's already done that before, but if you would like to watch these kind of videos, I've linked several of them down in the description below. Go give them a watch, they're really, really good. But before we start to design a moveset for Scouts, we need to first learn what makes him iconic. As you see, the Smash series is all about iconism. It's all about iconic characters using their iconic moves from their iconic games. We need to take a surface level look at what makes Scout such an iconic character and how would that translate into Smash Brothers. Because if we boil away everything else apart from his gameplay, it just comes down to running and shooting guns, and that wouldn't translate to Smash very well at all. So after taking a surface level and in-depth look at what Scout is and what he isn't, I think I've boiled down to what he could be defined as as five things, and we're going to quickly cover these and then we'll start to design a moveset. So, the first one, the big obvious one, speed. Scout is speed. He is fast, he runs fast, he jumps fast, and he shoots fast. Now we're a bit in luck here, as speed is historically something that translates quite well into Smash Brothers. Captain Falcon, of course, coming from a racing game, is the second fastest character in the game on the ground. So just by taking a look at how Scout uses his speed in game and the current speeds of the Super Smash Brothers characters, I think we're going to be putting Scout's speed somewhere in between Ridley and Palutena. Yes, Ridley is the 10th fastest character on the ground in Smash Brothers. I did not know that. But for the sake of argument, let's say Scout's speed would be the same as Cloud's would be, 2.167. Now, the second thing I think Scout is best known for is his ability to double jump. So Scout desperately needs to use his speed and combination of jumps to avoid getting hit, because once he's hit, he's practically dead. The Scout's Mook Crazy Leg spam strategy is something we've all seen and is something incredibly effective and difficult to fight against. And once again, this kind of translates into Smash Brothers quite well as well. So considering how a character's air speed is different to their ground speed, we now need to pick a new air speed for Scout. And honestly, I'm going to go with Cloud again. I think Cloud's physics as a whole suit how I want Scout to play in Smash Brothers very well. So taking inspiration from Cloud's stats yet again, we're going to find Scout's air speed is going to be 1.155. I also feel his jumps are going to be quite high and relatively floaty as this is of course a huge part of his gameplay in TF2. So let's give him about the same jump height statistics as me, Brawler, Sonic and Fox. And for his full speed I feel we could be a little bit more forgiving so let's give him the exact full speed of my best friend Robin which is about 1.5. Now continuing on from his double jumps and run speed I find another iconic thing about Scout is how he uses his legs. He basically uses his legs to get in and to get out of fights and to avoid damage. Now in terms of Smash Brothers translation, I feel we've once again struck gold as there are a variety of fighters who use leg based and kick focused attacks in their kits. So the majority of his moveset is going to come down to some very leg and kick focused stuff. Now I don't really know where else to slot this in in terms of iconism, but I do feel Scout would be a much lighter character. Known for his speed and his jump height, Scout is obviously a very light man and he uses that to his advantage. So I'm honestly willing to make him as light as Bayonetta, which would make him the 8th lightest character in the game. We have to remember the physics we put on Scout already are very good and we need to balance that out somehow and I don't think Scout is anywhere close to being a heavyweight. 
Now the final two things about Scout that I feel are the most iconic things about him, I'm actually going to combine together, those being his attitude and his use of weapons. Being the youngest of seven brothers, he was bound to develop some sort of strange or strong attitude, and I think it's just a fantastic design of his character. He comes off as cocky, laid back, egotistical and arrogant, but most of this is a facade as he actually doesn't have too much confidence in himself. And I do feel this could also translate into his gameplay as well. And the final iconic thing about him that I previously mentioned, his weapons. Scout has some very interesting and very unique weapons that 100% could translate to Smash regardless of what they are. Now, we do run into a bit of issues when it comes to guns, as because of Smash Brothers age rating, Snake wasn't allowed any guns, he was only allowed explosives. However, Joker has a gun, and I know it's a toy gun, but they don't ever specify that it's a toy gun in the game, so I think it's fine. And thus concludes our iconistic evaluation of Scout. I'm very sorry that was a very long section, but I did say this was going to be an in-depth analysis, and if I didn't, we'll just pretend I did. So now that we've defined what Scout is, what he isn't, and what his physics would be, let's get into designing the moveset. So as previously specified, we are designing Scout's moveset specifically using what is already in Smash, as this would make the limitations much easier to handle. So in order to do this, I, and I kid you not, combed through every single move in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate to determine how he would play. This is why this video has taken three weeks to make. I have scouted the best leg-based, projectile, and most interesting moves I could generally find, and I've combined them together for you, for your entertainment. Please do subscribe, this video took a while to make. We'll be covering every move individually, and for the order of directional moves, we'll be going in the pattern side, up, down. Now without further ado, let's finally kick this thing off. The majority of jabs in Smash Bros. Ultimate are some combination of punches, arm strikes, and swords, and these aren't necessarily two things Scout is going to be doing. Yet I actually think Byleth, a character with a sword, funny enough, has the best jab for us to give to Scout. His jab starts off with a chop, which is interesting, and then turns into a pivot leg swivel, and I think this would fit Scout perfectly, honestly. This move fits the context of Byleth's character quite well, as he's a mercenary, so he's not just going to be fighting with his sword. Yet, at the same time, I also feel for the opposite reason this fits Scout quite well, as he could throw out a cowardly chop, and then realise he can style on his opponent with a swivel pivot leg kick. As a character's burst movement option, I feel Scout's dash attack is once again going to involve his legs and a kick of some sort. So, after coming through the many kick-based dash attacks in the game, I actually feel Sora's would be the best fit for our Scout here. This low sweeping long sliding foot strike would actually fit Scout pretty well, as animation wise this not only fits his character but also stylistically. As a previously stated part of our criteria, these moves must not only fit Scout but also the physics we've given him. So I honestly feel this move is pretty perfect for Scout, and there are a couple others like it, but Sora specifically I think has the best combination of style, range and slide. Tilts can be anywhere from a staple part of a character's neutral to a part of their combo game to utterly useless, and therefore it's very important to be conscious of the kind of moves we would be giving to Scouts, because if we were to just give him nothing but fantastic neutral tools or nothing but fantastic combo tools, he would be insanely good. So for forward tilt, I'm going with Terry's forward tilt, as this has the adequate balance of both style and substance. So there's a lot of frontal kick tilts in the game, yet I actually feel Terry's would be the best as he raises his leg up instead of swiveling around. Considering how we just gave him a swiveling move for his jab, I feel we should give him a raising leg move this time for his forward tilt. Now in terms of up tilt, would you call me insane if I said that this entire video was inspired by Pit's up tilt? I used to play a lot of Pit in Smash 4, so the other day I went back into Ultimate and tested out Pit again to see if he had changed that much, and I completely forgot how utterly cool this move just looks. This move alone inspired me to make some sort of moveset based video for Smash, and since my audience will only watch Tier 2 content, here we are. Now lastly for tilts, we have down tilt. So down tilts generally tend to be combo starters or pokes in the neutral, and I feel because of the moves we've kind of given him right now, we probably should go in the route of combo starter. As his forward tilt is a decent poke in the neutral, and his up tilt is a little bit inconsistent, so I feel we should give him a nice comboing sweeping leg tilt. So I'm going to be going with me Brawler's down tilt. I feel this would fit Scout pretty well. Now, the reason I'm not going with something like, for example, Incineroar's, which would also fit Scout pretty well, is purely because Incineroar's physics are intentionally awful and therefore his moves are fantastic and that's meant to balance him out in theory, but the physics we've given Scout already are pretty good, so I wouldn't want to be giving something like this to Scout. Your common smash attack has two jobs, deal damage and take stocks, yet there are some that deal in some more peculiar areas of a character's kit. So this is why for the forward smash I have chosen Ness's forward smash to base scouts off. Now just by looking at this you should understand why I've done this. It's a bat, scout loves his baseball, yet at the same time this move also comes with a built-in reflector. 
I, I really don't know why. Maybe it's something to do with Earthbound, I'm not too sure. But basically, I feel this should be Scout's forward smash, and I feel he should also get to keep the Reflector free of charge as well. Now, in terms of up smash, I feel there's none other we could possibly choose than Wolf's up smash. This is the perfect combination of stylish, flashy, and practical. Slowing it down here, you can probably understand why the main reason I've chose this move is. It's because of Scout's breakdancing taunt. I have tried to fit in Scout's taunts and personality the best I can into his moves, yet there's really not a lot we can do with some of these taunts. But I feel the breakdance taunt works incredibly well for his up smash. Now for the down tilt, and I debated on whether this should be the breakdance taunt, as, well, it's kind of a bit more grounded, and Mario and Luigi have some pretty good breakdancing moves. Yes, I just really couldn't find anything else that would fit Scout's up smash, which is why I went for Wolf's. But in terms of down smashes, I feel we should go with Captain Falcon's double leg strike. This move is insanely cool looking, and it's also a little bit slower than most of the things we've given him. However, to make up for it, it is adequately strong. And I just like the idea of Scout dropping the nonsense for a second and just kicking someone as hard as he can. Alright then, the special moves. So, this is probably going to be one of the longer segments of the video as I have a bit to explain for each one, but just bear with me. So, for his neutral special, I have tried to incorporate his scatter guns. Now, like I said previously, there's not a lot we can really do with the scatter guns, yet I feel there's something we can do for the neutral special. So, for his neutral B, okay, so you know how Terry's neutral B does this little burst of fire in the air? Yeah, that should be Scout's neutral B, but on the ground, but he can also use it in the air but it can also be B-reversed. If you want a nicer comparison in terms of hitbox and function, think of Sora's Free Zaga. It would basically function a bit like that. I just want this to be a really quick get-off-me tool that you can use in the neutral, you can use in the air, you can B-reverse, and all sorts of other things like that. I feel also if you hold down the button, you should be able to continuously fire like Scout can in-game, obviously. Now, I, I, like I said, this is going to take a bit more explaining for some of these specials, but I feel this would be a quite good move. This move would be very good at edge guarding, and considering how Scout is probably going to be an air-based fighter, I feel this would work out in his kit fantastically. Okay, so now for his side B, and for his side B, I'd like him to throw the cleaver. This would, of course, deal bleed damage over time. You can basically think of this a bit like Joker's Eha in that it's a small projectile at first, yet would deal a small amount of damage over time as well. Now, in terms of physics, I'd like this to have the same properties as K. Rool's crown. For those who don't know, when K. Rool loses his crown, the enemy can pick it up and throw it. It's a very heavy projectile and deals a lot of knockback. However, you wouldn't be able to pick up and throw the cleaver. Just in terms of item weights, I'd like this to have the same stats as K. Rool's crown. Maybe even the projectile arc as well, as since Joker's E half sends directly into the ground, I don't think that would fit the cleaver very well at all. So, depending on how good your imagination is, Scout's side B would be throwing the cleaver with the exact same weight as the crown towards his enemy in a frontal direction. I feel you should maybe also be able to do a smash attack to make the cleaver go faster. I did say that all the scout's moves would be inspired by pre-existing smash ones, but I didn't say they'd be one-to-one -one copies. This one is a little bit complex and I do apologise for that, but I could think of no better projectile than the cleaver. Now in terms of upbeats, I'm just going to quickly talk about the atomizer and the soda popper, as these are two things I've seen in a lot of fan creative movesets, and these are two things I don't think could work in Smash. I don't think you could give a character like Scout three jumps. If you look at any character with three jumps in Smash, their physics are generally quite terrible to make up for this. Scout is going to be an air-based fighter, and therefore he's going to need some pretty good air physics, and just giving him a third jump would essentially mean they'd have to neuter that. And by no way by any means could we potentially give him five jumps. No, 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 no. So instead, for Scout's up B, I feel it should be two downward shots on the force of nature. Now in terms of basis, I feel Greninja's up B is the best one we can possibly think of. So obviously it wouldn't go as high as he's using water and Scout would just be using two shots on the force of nature, yet I take massive inspiration from the directional turning that this move can perform. And I feel this nice combination of decent recovery, good jumps and fantastic air speed would help Scout to be an incredibly good air fighter. Now for the down B, and I just feel it could be no other than the infamous Criticola. So, in terms of basis, I think we're going to be taking Wii Fit Trainer's Deep Breathing. So how Deep Breathing works is that you use it and you heal a small percentage, this obviously wouldn't apply to Scout, and then you get an absolutely insane damage boost beyond the likes that God couldn't even create. Now, obviously, the Criticola does mark you for death when you use it in-game. Now, I feel Scout maybe could take a bit more damage whilst using this thing, as this would really incentivize him as kind of a rushdown air-based fighter, and I think that would be very cool. But the reason I don't want him to have a small period of time after using the Criticola in which he takes more damage is because this would incentivize running away and camping, and that's not fun to fight against. 
the graphic was a little bit messy there, wasn't it? Sorry, green screens aren't 100%. Anyway, so time to talk about his aerials. Now, you might have noticed throughout Scout's kit so far, you've seen a distinctive lack of scatterguns, and this is where the aerials come in. Since I believe Scout should be an air-based fighter, I believe the majority of his scattergun moves should be on his aerials to encourage people to use him as an air-based fighter. So starting with his neutral air, I take huge inspiration from Robin here, as I feel Scout could have a double-sided blast with the scattergun. Obviously this is a sword so the animations won't match entirely, but I like the general idea and the placing of the hitboxes. I feel Scout could shoot first on his front with the scattergun and then turn around to shoot behind him. But here's the part in the video in which I become slightly torn as I had so many cool ideas for non-scattergun aerials that I just don't really know what to do. So in the original run of this script I had scouts forward air and back air being the exact same thing and they were both based off villagers. You see for villagers forward air and back air he fires a little projectile out of a slingshot but we could just so easily replace the slingshot with the sandman and the rap assassin. We could for example have the forward air being the sandman ball being launched and the back air being the rap assassin ball ball launched. But the longer this script went on I realised that might not be a very good idea in terms of gameplay because if he's going to be an air based fighter I don't necessarily think he should be a zoner. But the concept is so perfect and the move is right there that I'm so torn I don't know what to do. So um, okay new compromise. Let's make only scouts forward air the same as villagers. Of course replace the slingshot and the ball with the sandman and the baseball. There would of course be no stun effect tied to this because that would just be outrageous to fight against. And for scouts back air, let's make it the same as me gunners back air except instead of an explosion it's the rap assassin's ball shattering. I feel that's a fairly good compromise. You could also make it for example one of the scatter guns shooting. However, I just kind of want to find a good blend of both using the bats and the scatter guns, which is why for the down air specifically, we are just copying me gunners one for one, but with the scatter gun instead. You might now think this is not a lot of moves using the scatter gun, but just because of how commonly these moves are going to be used in general, including the neutral beam, mind you, which is going to be very good, I think it will make up for it. And finally for his up air, we could do another scattergun blast like a bit with Ivysaur's up air, or we could do something insanely cool and give him the same up air as Sheik and Joker. This kind of twisty upward kick I think would fit Scout fantastically. I know it would limit us a bit in terms of not really using the scatterguns to the best of their advantage, but come on, look at this. This is just so Scout. I'm sorry this part of the video is a little bit inconsistent. The script currently just says flounder because there were so many options for the aerials that we could have given to Scout and I really just couldn't choose which ones would best fit both his kit currently and his character. That's the problem with having such an in-depth look at what Scout could possibly do in Smash. I kind of have to weigh up what's cool and what's Scout with what's functional and how would this actually play amongst the rest of his kit. Whoa, what? holy crap, Lois, it's the Byleth. Wow, that's... That, that that's amazing. Wait, what's oh, wow, I've got the the thing. Go go Chrome, go and then and then Byleth goes up here and then we select the two of these and then they go Okay, so the render I had of the teeny tiny Robin running across the screen and doing the moves uh somehow broke or something like that, I'm not too sure. And it was meant to be the final Smash one. So this is kind of the miscellaneous tier for anything that doesn't really fit into a designated slot that we're just gonna kind of cram together. Okay, so for get up attack, I think we're just gonna rip me gunners exactly, but with the scat gun, seems pretty good. For get up from the ledge attack, Pit turns out has this incredibly cool and stylish one. It's an overhead flip kick and it's amazing to look at. I, I did not know he had this. So yeah, I think Scout can have that quite nicely. And then for the pummel attack, we gotta go with my man Byleth. This animation is by no means unique to Byleth, yet I feel his combination of laid back stance combined with incredibly high kick fits Scout pretty well. Now when it comes to throws, we have to give him basically all of Fox's throw animations as well, as we haven't used a pistol anywhere in this moveset yet. Animations like these would fit Scout pretty perfectly, including the nice little flourish he does when putting his gun away. Now the final thing I'm going to cover is of course the final smash and I feel the final smash will just be another token cutscene final smash with all the mercs or something and maybe they do the pose from the comics, I'm not too sure. But in terms of hitboxes I feel we'd be looking at somewhere around the size of Sephiroth's, you know, obviously not with the supernova cutscene playing in the background but just in terms of the initial sword swing. The animation for this however would be Scout doing the batter up taunt and I just like the idea of Scout battering up an opponent and then being beaten up by all of the mercs or something. I don't know, you can work it out in the comments if you'd like. And with that, I have finally concluded this three week long project. I'm very sorry if you weren't 100% happy with everything in this video. I know moveset analysis and moveset design is not something everyone can agree on constantly. And I'm very sorry if there were any mistakes in this. 
Like I said, I don't necessarily enjoy working on videos over such a long period because I tend to make more mistakes if I do. Yet at the same time, the quality of the projects also greatly improves. So it's good with the bad, I guess. I guess I just need to check more. Uh, I'm currently recording this on the 27th. Hopefully the video should be going up today. If it isn't, then I'm not too sure when it will be going up and I'm so sorry, but it should be premiered. Hello everyone in the chat. Thank you to you, the viewer who's made it so far into this video. It really means a lot to me. Thank you to everyone who's joined the Discord server off the previous video. It's been wonderful chatting to you so far. And do let me know who you'd like me to cover next in this series. I won't necessarily be going in class order if people say want to see demo first, but do let me know. And don't expect the video to come out pretty soon because this took a while to make. In terms of plugs or shoutouts, I've linked several other Smash Move set designing videos full scout down in the description below. They were a huge inspiration for this and I was glad to find actual moves in Ultimate that kind of fit this bill. And also a huge inspiration for this video was Mockrock, his fantastic Smash channel who makes fantastic content about platform fighters as a whole. A lot of the visuals from this video were greatly inspired by some of his works. I highly recommend you go check them out. Link in the description below. But with that all being said, thank you once again for watching. Apologies to the Claude Violet that I've been beating up for the past three weeks, and I will see you later down the sunny road.